Welcome back to the Crochet Corrado as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to do the Pinwheel Crochet Shawl. This is a three page pattern and it's considered intermediate and I would totally agree with that level as well. This is one that you do not want to be cooking or cleaning or taking care of anybody. You want to have some you time and concentrate into this particular pattern. This shawl is one of the nicest ones I've seen come out of Yarn Inspirations in a long time. So I'm really quite excited. I'm not saying none of their stuff is great. I'm just saying that the detail on the actual pinwheels itself is absolutely just fantastic and when you get working on this I hope that you feel the same way. So what we're going to do is that we have a diagram and let me tell you a little bit about that. So on page number three there is a diagram and uh, it's actually kind of smaller. So what I've done on the crochet crowd is that under the same pattern name is that I've done a blown up version for a whole page size so that you don't have to squint so much. So if you want to download that um, you can do so and it's a lot easier to be able to follow. Today's pattern requires you to use a Peyton's Grace yarn love this yarn. This is a mercerized cotton. So this is one of those ones that I think are just absolutely spectacular especially in this size. It's recommending a size F hook, a 3.75 uh, millimeter crochet hook but if you can't find that I did substitute and use a 3.5 millimeter if you wish. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the actual sample and then I'll show you the diagram and then we'll show you how to do all of the steps. So what we're going to be doing just as a full disclaimer is that I'm only gonna show you how to do the square. Once you've done the square you just have to whip stitch them together and do one complete border of one single crochet equally spaced all the way around. So the hard work really is in the square. It's not in the border or whip stitching and of course there's tutorials available to be able to whip stitch as well. So let me show you what the actual square looks like and then you can make a decision if this is the way you wanna play today. So here's my tutorial squares. I did this all actually on an airplane so it was actually something I was able to handle still at my food services. Of course you never turn down complimentary drinks or the cheap snack that they give you. So here is my sample and you can see from a distance these petals that are going out. Aren't they fantastic? Now I can see this better on the camera than I can actually in person. That's because I'm just emotionally too close to this thing. <laughs> so I have uh, many samples here and here's the green and I just had fun with these and here is the yellow and I just think it turned out really quite awesome. So you're going to notice that there's a repetition in this pattern. So let me just get you the pink one and then we'll talk a little bit about that and then bring you back to the diagram to show you how it all puzzles together and makes all your crochet dreams come true. So here's what the pink one looks like. So you're going to notice that there's a rotation going on in this pattern. Really quite simple to follow. Um, I'm actually really quite shocked on how easy it was to follow and what you have to just pay attention to is exactly where the stitches go. <laughs> I know that's my Sherlock Holmes trying to solve it all for you right now. So most of this is a repetition. So you're gonna count how many petals. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So there's eight repeti uh, repet uh, <laughs> repetitions going on. So what you're going to do is that you're going to notice that the changes in round number nine and in round number nine I'm going to show you this on the pattern. It just changes so that we convert this circle then into a square. So right in round number nine you can see that it takes a different uh, position here. It grows out here and then back in. So every other uh, between the petals kind of changes in order to get this to be back square. At the end of your project you're going to want to wet block it. So just damp it out, lay it down flat and then this will take its shape that it needs to and then at the very end you'll just whip stitch. So use the same color. So if you're, if the, if um, the colors that you're using use at least one of the colors that is joining to each other and of course if you want to use different colors of yarns uh, for different squares I'd recommend it too because you'll see the sample looks amazing and you saw the other stuff that I just did with the colors. So you can have a lot of fun with the colors. So let me take you to the diagram. Let's show you a little bit of that and really wrap your mind around this. So this here is a blown up version of what is in the diagram and I told you that you can get this blown up version on the crochetcrowd.com. Just come to over to our website and just download the PDF and then it's all blown out for you. So you're going to notice that it's eight petals and if you look carefully you can really kind of see these petals going on and so it's just repetition. So it's up to me to get you started and then tell you to repeat the step and then do it over and over in order to get all eight done. So where it changes I told you it was on round number nine. So round number nine we just start telling a different story and we start converting our circle into a square. So this set of instructions is different from here. 
I think one thing that I did notice is that when I was working this step sometimes I was forgetting that I wasn't over there. So it's just something that you just have to pay attention to and this is uh <laughs> where life gets a little dicey if you know what I'm saying and that's when the steward, uh, stewardess needs to walk by and offer you like a complimentary alcoholic beverage. So it's actually not a hard pattern. It's just a matter of putting in the legwork in order to do it and what you have to really pay attention to is exactly where these double crochets are going into. So let me zoom in and show you those. So when you really zoom in here you can see that everything is kind of growing out. So in row, round number two you're chaining up three and there's two into the same space and then what you notice in round number three when you get there you're chaining up three and then there's one in each of these double crochets and then one in the space. Round number four one uh, chaining three there and then you see how it's going across. So one time it was one double crochet in one space. This time it's two. Okay and then the next time it's two again and then the next time it's two again and then the next time it's only one and the next time it's two. So what you have to pay attention to is these chain two spaces. So when this get, when we get there you'll notice that we're skipping over two stitches here. We're skipping over a chain and a stitch here and look at this one. This is the one that will really throw you for a loop. <laughs> it's not hard though. Like trust me just stick with me folks. <laughs> so you're gonna chain two and you're only gonna skip one and then bring it back in balance. It works out beautifully when you go to do this example and then you're back then you see here skipping one chain and one double crochet. So it's really not hard. It's just a matter of paying attention to your spacing right here and how many that you're putting in, in the chains as you're progressing to the next round. So let's grab our crochet hook. It's a three and a half or 3.75 millimeter crochet hook. I'm using a three and a half today or it's a size F if you're in the US and we're using our Peyton's Grace and let's do magic with our yarn today. So let's begin. Okay so let's begin to make the magic. We're gonna start off with the slip knot. This is an intermediate pattern folks so if you're really new to crochet this may be a real struggle for you there as well. So let's uh, begin and we're going to start off with a slip knot and chaining of five. So one, two, three, four and five and I want you to insert the hook into the beginning chain and yarning over and pulling it through and through to form the center ring. Now when you go around the next round I want you to lay down the straggler around the center of the ring so that it gets stuck underneath. So let's move along now to round number one. So round number one we're going to establish our eight petals. We need to get those started. So let's chain up three which counts as a double crochet. Listen folks when it says chain three at the beginning of a round that means it's considered as a double crochet. I'll probably tell you each time anyway but that's what it is. So let's chain three. So one, two, three and there's your first double crochet and then you're gonna double crochet one more time going right into the center of the ring. Okay so now you're going to chain one and in the center of the ring again make sure the stragglers part of it and you're going to put in two double crochets in a row. Then you're going to chain one and then another two double crochets in a row. So here's the secret if there is a secret. Here's what you need to know. I need you to keep going around in this fashion so that you have eight groups of two double crochets that are together and then I'll see you at the end of this round. So because this is intermediate I think you know what you're doing so I'm gonna leave that to you. So please get these eight groups of two double crochets done. Make sure that there is a chain one that separates them. So I'm back and I have my eight groups of two. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight and then make sure you chain one first and then join it to the top of the first chaining of three that you started with to join it with a slip stitch. So now we're ready to move on to round number two. Round number two is the only round at this moment that you need to worry about moving yourself over. So where you are right now you cannot start there. So I need you to insert into the top of the next double crochet and pull through and through with a slip stitch and insert into the chain one space and do the same. So insert, pull through and through. So you have just now positioned yourself over a chain one space and in this particular case this is where you need to be. Chain up three counts as a double crochet and then two double crochets into the same chain one space. I'm gonna tell you something that's gonna blow your mind in just a moment. I want you to chain three. So one, two, three and you're going to go to the next chain one space. How many stitches are you gonna put in? 
you're gonna put in three, right? So you got a double crochet here which is the chain three and two more. So there's three. So this round is easy to remember because when you get three double crochets done you need to chain three in order to advance to the next chain one space. So there's three double crochets, chain three and then go to the next chain one space and do three more double crochets. So please do that all the way around. You should have eight groups of three double crochets separated by chain threes. So continue that for round number two. So I'm coming all the way back around. There should be eight groups of three. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Don't forget to chain three and then just join it to the top of the first chain three to conclude off round number two. Easy peasy, right? So let's move on to round number three. So round number three, we're starting exactly where we finished right on the top and we're gonna chain three. Counts as a double crochet. I promised you I would probably say that and you're gonna double crochet in the next two but you're not quite done. There's more folks. <laughs> two easy payments of 1995. So we're gonna have to double crochet one time in the chain three space. Okay, so that is one of your petals. So you're gonna chain three. So one, two, three and jump immediately to the first double crochet again. So you're gonna double crochet in each one of the double crochets. So there's a total of three of those. So one, two, and three and you're gonna double crochet then in the chain three space one time. Okay, then chain three and start in the first one and double crochet in each one of those and then one time in the chain one space. Please do that all the way around for round number three. When you get all the way back around don't forget to get your last one in that chain three space. Chain three and then just join it to the top of the first chain three to complete. That was round number three. So it's looking pretty easy, right? So now let's go on to round number four. So round number four is the final time that this appears solid before we start dividing off to make the middle of the petal. So we're going to chain up three. So one, two, and three counts as a double crochet. I want you to double crochet in each one of the double crochets that are there. So with that chaining of three and these three that gives you a total of four. And then in the chain three space I want you to put in uh, two double crochets. So one and two. Don't worry about going into the actual chain itself. Go into the space. It's just easier and then I need you to chain four. So one, two, three, and four. So I want you to repeat that all the way around for number four. So each one of the double crochets are gonna get one double crochet and in the chain two, uh, uh, three space put two more double crochets then chain four and then begin again. Please do that all the way around for round number four. Coming all the way back around, don't forget to chain that four to be in, uh, to begin to join it to the top of the first chain three. So I think I'm gonna bring you back to the diagram. Let's show you where you are because now we're gonna start dividing off into the petal sections. So here in the diagram we're about to do round number five. So we're gonna chain up three and then the next two are double crochets. We chain two, skip two and we double crochet in the last one here and then two more into the chain four space. After we get that done we chain up four and do the same thing. So now we're focusing on getting these spaces that you see in order to continue this. So let's begin round number five. Let's begin round number five. We're gonna chain three counts as a double crochet and I want you to double crochet the next two double crochets. So one and two. Then I want you to chain two, skip two and you're gonna end up in the last one. So I want you to double crochet in that last double crochet there after you've skipped those two and then in the chain four space I want you to put in two more double crochets. So your goal at this point is that when you're finishing off each of these petals you're getting three before it, you're getting the spacing of two and then three. Then you chain four and begin all over again. So the first three in a row we each be a double crochet. So one, two and three followed by chain two skip two go you're gonna when you skip to two you'll be in the last one here double crochet that one plus the next chain 
four space. You wanna put two more in there. And then chain four and begin that all over again. So please do that with each and you can see that the petal is dividing off right in the center. Please do that and I'll see you at the end of this round. When you get all the way back around, don't forget to put those two double crochets in that chain four space and then make another chain four. So one, two, three, and four. And then just join it to the top of the first chain three that you started with like so. So now you can see the petals have just uh, did their divide right in the center of each one of those and let's begin then round number six. So let's begin round number six. We're gonna chain three counts as a double crochet and then we're gonna put a double crochet in each of the next two double crochets. One and two. So you have a total how many double crochets at this point? You have the chain three, you have two more. I want you to put another double crochet in the next chain two space. So and then I want you to chain two. So here I want you to skip the next chain. So there's two chains. So skip the next chain and the next double crochet and double crochet then beginning the second double crochet over. So do that one and do its friend next door and in the chain four space I want you to put in two double crochets. So here is the easiest thing that the designer has done for you. The group, remember that there was three on each either side of the center line. Now there's four. And so if you can remember that, it's easy. So to start the next round, you have to chain five. So one, two, three, four, five. Coming into the first double crochet to begin. So we have one. Oops, let me retry that. So we have one. And the goal is to get four, right? So one and then you're in the next double crochet for two, next double crochet for three and then the chain two space which is next. It's gonna have one. And then you chain two, one and two. So you skip the next chain and the next double crochet. So double crochet the second double crochet over. So one and then it's friend and then two into the chain four space. One and two. And there is your four again. So then chain five and then re repeat going all the way around. So please do that and I'll see you at the end of round number six. So once you get that all the way around, don't forget to chain your five to then join it to the beginning chain three. So that was it. So let's uh, continue then into round number seven. So let's begin. So remember in round number uh, six is that we had four in a row and then we had four in a row and we had a chain two space that separates them. So in round number seven we're gonna go to five this time. So we're gonna chain up three, counts as a double crochet and you're gonna double crochet in each of the double crochets that are available. So one, two, three and the next one, the fourth one which gives you a total of five if you're looking at it, will be right into the chain one space. So here's the one that I said that may throw you off. You still have to chain two but what you're going to do is just skip this chain one space only and then double crochet starting in the next double crochet. That's the only one here that may throw you off. Okay, so it's keeping the spacing nice and consistent. So you're gonna double crochet into each of the double crochets that you see plus you're going to add one double crochet into the chain five space. Okay, so you got your five that you started. You have your chain two but you technically only skipped one stitch and then you went all the way around like so. So then you got five in a row and then you're gonna chain a total of, um, a total here of, of five. So one, two, three, four and five and then just immediately start again. So you're gonna double crochet in each of the double crochets, one into the chain one space, chain two and then immediately start in the next double crochet, do those four plus one into the chain five space and then chain five and do that all over again. Please do that all the way around for round number seven. So I'm coming all the way around on number seven and I just have my chain five and I am just joining it to the top of the first chain three. So let's begin round number eight. So last time we had five and then five. So this time in round number eight we're gonna expand once again. So we're looking for the number six. So chain up three and you're gonna double crochet in each one of these double crochets that you see. So it's one into each. So one, two, three 
and four and with that chaining of three that you started with you got a total of five but I told you you need six. So in the chain two space put a double crochet in, chain two, skip the next chain one space and the next double crochet and then just start the second one over and you need six double crochets in a row. So one, two, three, four and I told you you need six but we're out of stitches so in the chain five space you're going to put in two more double crochets to give you that six that you need. Then so now that we have that in there to advance to the next one you have to chain six. So one, two, three, four, five and six and then start all over again. So then you just start in the first one and you have to get your six in there. So you're gonna do that one plus the other four. So it gives you five. Put one in the chain one space which gives you six. Chain two, skip the next uh, space here and the next double crochet and put your four in and then your extra two on the chain five space and then chain six again and restart that all the way around. So please do that and I'll see you at the end of this round, round number eight. So I'm coming up to the end of round number eight and don't forget to chain six to join to the top of the chain three. So now we're gonna go round number nine. We should bring back the diagram next because the diagram we're gonna take a slightly different path and then uh, you can really start to see that it's really coming out quite nicely here. So let's begin to look at the diagram once again. So let's begin to look at round number nine. So we've just finished off eight. So right now we're here. Okay, so in order to start round number nine we have to move over and slip stitch twice over so that we can start in the third one over, chain three and then continue along and you're filling in this chain two space that you see here. So you're gonna just get in enough. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten. So there's ten uh, stitches there. You're going to finish off and not do the final two and then you're gonna chain seven and then single crochet right around this chain one space and then uh, chain seven again and then begin the next one that you can see and it's exactly the same thing. So what we're doing now is that we're dividing ourselves because in round number ten we start saying okay this here is gonna be a flat edge and this is gonna lead into the corner. If you're looking right now put the video on hold and write down these numbers that you see. So you have six, seven and seven, 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 seven. seven. So I don't know if I have too many sevens that I told you but just fill those in with sevens. Here I want you to put 11 and 11, 9 and 9 and 7 and 7. So this helps you get track. So when I come back after we do um, round number nine I'm going to have you just mark what side is the flat side so it becomes easier. I found with myself because uh, it looks kind of similar to each other when you're doing it for the first time that you get confused in exactly where you are. So without further ado let's begin round number nine. So let's begin round number nine. We cannot start right where we are so we have to slip stitch over two more times. So just going over to the next one slip and the next one slips. So you should be on top of the third stitch in from there. Then chain three. So one, two, three counts as a double crochet. So just say that's number one. So then you're gonna double crochet in the next one. So let's say that's two because it is two and three and four. You have the chain two space now. Fill those in. So you have five and six because there's two chain spaces so therefore there should be two double crochets there and then continue along. So this is gonna be seven, eight, nine and ten. So I told you there should be ten stitches as per the diagram and there is and you should finish off so that you're not finishing off these two that you see. You're now going to chain seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six and seven and in the chain space here single crochet right around the space. Don't go into any stitch just go to a space and then chain seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six and seven and then just start the next one. So you're gonna start the third one in. Okay so just one, two, go to the third and you're going to do ten in a row. And that includes your chain one space. So that's one and two and you don't really need to count if you're confident. Three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And that ten, you should be leaving the last two. So chain seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. The chain space here, single crochet around the space. And then chain seven again. So one, two, three. Uh, this is gonna be three, four, five, six, seven. Rotate around. And the next one it's gonna be the third one and to start your double crochets and do your 10 across and then do the same thing. So essentially you are turning each one of these chain one space or these chain spaces into two by the time you're finishing that and you can clearly see that. So please do that all the way around for round number nine. So I'm coming all the way back around. I just gotta chain my seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven and then just slip stitch to the top of the chain three. And there you go. So you can see that this works out pretty good. So what I wanna do is that I wanna mark this one here and then I wanna skip the next one. So let me back out here and I'm gonna get four stitch markers. So you can just use spare yarn to do this. To do this, I, I would strongly recommend that you're gonna do this. So let me just be right back. So on my diagram here is that the next round, round number 10 takes a slightly different path here in right here and then right here it takes a different path. So what I want to do where I've highlighted I wanna mark this one, this one, this one and this one with the stitch marker and so if you look at it it's the one just before the um, slip stitch when you're going to start. So right where we are here I wanna mark the middle one here uh, with the stitch marker so that indicates to me that this is going to be a flat edge side. Okay so just do that. And then I want to, and this just is gonna just be an indication of where I am in the pattern. I found with myself I can get confused easily. So the next one you're going to skip and you're going to go to the next one here and you're gonna place another stitch marker right into the side. And I want you to do the same with the one that is just right. There's only eight sides, right? So I want you to do the next one. So skip the next one, come right down to the base so it should be completely opposite down. I was in an airport doing this and I found I got distracted pretty easily but I think I could get distracted at home because I did one at home as well before I left on my trip. So you skip the next one and then go to this one and then these are the four sides that will be your flat sides that when you're going to work on this project then for the remaining of it. So when we progress then to row number 10 there is gonna be slightly different work on the ones that are marked. So let's begin round number 10. So I'm gonna take you through, this is a corner because it's not marked and this is a flat side. So the flat sides are here, this is a corner. So I'll take you through one corner and one flat side. So let's begin. We're not in the right section then to begin. Like we did before we have to move over to the third one. So right where we are, so one, two, and three, I want you to slip two over so that you're sitting on top of the third one. Just like you see. Now I want you to chain three, so one, two and three and I want you then to double crochet and let me just verify that. So one, two, three, four, five and six. So we have a, have a total of seven double crochets. So this is one of them. So then double crochet in the next one. So let's count those out together. So this is two and next one's three, four, this is five, and six. Oh. And seven. So right where we have, right, I wanna show you something. So right in the very beginning we skipped on two where we're sitting on the third one. In the end of this one here you're only just going to the second last one so it's not an equal balance. This is what makes it veer off. It's awesome. So what we're going to do then is then for this one this is your corner. So in the corner we want to chain seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And in the next chain space, okay, so there's two of them. So the next one I want you to put in three double crochet into the space. So one, two, 
and three. Then I want you to chain seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And come to the other chain space and put in three double crochet. So one, two, and three. Okay, and so if we started off seven to get to this first grouping of three and we did seven, what do you think we have to do? We have to chain seven, right? So we have to three, uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So you can see that there will be three chain sevens to make up one corner. So then you're gonna start off in the third one of the double crochet and you're going to do seven double crochets in a row. So it's the magic number seven in this particular round. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And that should end up with the second last one and it does. So the petals remain unaffected. It's the spaces in between the petals that make the difference. So now we're gonna go to a flat edge. So on the flat edge, okay, so on the flat edge we wanna play within this single crochet that you got marked. So you're gonna chain nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And you're going to go into the single crochet that's marked. Okay, it's the one right in the middle. And then chain nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So then you just continue over to the next petal and go to the third one in and then that's where you're gonna start again and that is your corner that you're gonna be working on that you started with. So you can actually kinda see the corners taking its shape. So this is your flat sides then and then the other sides are your corners. So remember that your corner was chaining of seven and then you do your seven in a row, you chain seven, do your three double crochet, chain seven, three double crochet, chain seven and then come to the third one over do your seven and then this one is your flat edge that I've just shown you. So please do that all the way around for round number uh, 10. So I'm coming all the way back around. I've chained my seven and I'm just going to slip stitch. Now this is the first time I've actually marked um, these edges uh, which was which and I'm telling you my life is so much better. <laughs> I wish I would have thought of that before. I was just trying to think how to teach this so that you weren't gonna get and do the same mistakes I did. So now we're gonna move on now to round number 11. So round number 11, guess what? We're not in the same space so we need to move over two more. So one and two. So you're on top of the third one. So chain up three. Okay, counts as a double crochet. And then just crochet two more times. So one and two. So you have a total of three in a row. And that's what it looks like. Okay, so this time there is two left over. And now we're gonna begin into the corner. So let me show you how to do a corner this time. So we're gonna chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And in the first chain space, I want you to put in three double crochet. So we have one and two and three. Just like that. And then chain seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The next chain space is directly in the middle of the other two. Do you see that? So what we're going to do in this space, there's a lot going on here. So we're gonna put in three double crochet first. So we have one. Hope I missed doing that. So let's try again. So we just have one, two, and three. Chain seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and in that exact same space I want you to put in three more double crochet. So we have one, two, and three. Okay, so that is your very corner. Do you see that? It's all in the same space. So then you're gonna chain seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then you're just gonna come to the next chain, one uh, chain space. And I want you to double crochet three times into that. So 
So we have one, two, and three. So then we're gonna chain seven one more time. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then I want you to skip and go to the third one of the double crochet. And I want you to put in a double crochet there. So one, two, and three. So I just want to, before I move on, so that is your corner. So that's just a take a look at the way that that looks. So you've gone from one space down to two, then you went to three, and then you went to five. So one, two, three, four, five. But look where these double crochets are right in the center. So just keep an eye on that. So now you've got your three in, and now we're gonna move along then to do it in the flat side. Just again, really easy. So it's just chaining 11. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, that was seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. It's a long chain. In the same single crochet as before, just single crochet again, and then eleven out again. So one, two, once you have your eleven, go to the third one in and start another corner. So if you need to review that corner again, just uh, circle back on this video. And uh, once you jumped over your left or your third one in, just put in your three and then start a corner again. So the corner is exactly the way you see it here. Okay, so it's really quite awesome. So you're gonna play. Just let's just recap that just verbally here. So you're gonna chain seven, double crochet three times into the space, chain seven, double crochet three times into the middle space, chain seven, double crochet three times again into the space, chain seven double crochet three times into this space, chain seven and then go to the third one over and then this here will then take you over. So you'll be chaining 11 and single crocheting into the space, chain 11 and then go to the third one over just like that. So please do that all the way around. You're gonna see that this thing is gonna get more and more square as you're working on it. So when you come all the way back around, your last one is a chain 11 and then you are going to stop here and just attach to the top and you're going to fasten off because the next time we wanna start off right in the corner. So use your scissors and weave in your loose ends. So just trim your yarn and we have one more round to do and then that's it. So the, on the diagram it looks so confusing. But I have to tell you that I think once you understand where the pattern is very similar to it, you realize that it's not hard to follow at all. So once we begin the next round you'll see that. So I wanna take you back to the diagram. I wanna show you on what you can do to be able to make it easier for yourself and really it's been designed really well so I think it's awesome. So just weave in your ends and then let's begin to look at the diagram next. So here's the diagram and what we've done is that we've been following it up like this. But we fastened off at this particular point and now we're gonna start off in a corner. And we're gonna start off and we're gonna chain one and put one single crochet in and a half double crochet. Now I was doing this in an airport and I wish I would have had a highlighter because I was trying to really understand this pattern but it's really hard to do it if you don't, if A if you're distracted and B if you're not really understanding the repeat. So what I figured out is that the designer every time there's a, a double crochet below, there's a double crochet over. So whenever you're going into a double crochet, it always be a double crochet. Do you see that? So you'll notice that is gonna happen. So you're pretty confident that you're just gonna put in three double crochets in a row because that's what's underneath. Now other than the, the, the corners, they'll have three double or single crochets. And the neat thing about it is that when you go in these chains, the easiest way to describe it is that when you're in a chain, you'll do a half double crochet, you'll do a single, and then a half. Do you see that? So what's gonna happen is that that's kind of like the commonality of it and the difference between this and this is that there's more single crochets in between. Big deal, right? So you can handle that. So every time the first chain space, it's a half, a single, and a half. And then you see that there's double crochets, so these must be double. And then in the next space here, there is a half, a single, and a half. So I put that there's one single crochet, one single crochet and I've just assumed that if you're going into the chain, the half double crochet must enter into the chain first then must exit out of the chain. So whatever happens in the middle. So there's one single crochet. The first big uh, 11 space here that you see is that there's gonna be four single crochets in a row. So there's obviously gonna be a half that starts it, a half that finishes it, there's a double that's right in the middle and then a half starts it and then this time there will be five 
and then a half will finish it and then you're back into the double crochets because you see it below. And then this time half, one and half. And so you're gonna continue that same idea going all the way around. So if you wanna highlight that so that when you're following it all the way around it's just easier. But really it's not a hard pattern to be able to follow. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna take you through one side and I'll take it to the other and tell you to just reverse the video back if you need to. So the only difference is, is that we're gonna start off in a partial corner but I'll explain that to you uh, when we get to the end here so that you can do that all the way around. So let's do the final round. Round number I believe it's 12. So let's begin number 12. So let's begin number 12. I'm gonna do one complete side with you. So I'm just gonna start off with the slip knot and I'm gonna put that onto my hook. And I'm gonna come into the one right in the very corner. So just look for it. There's two into the same space and the one in the middle is the one you wanna play into. And I want you to just join this with the slip stitch. So just, just wrap it around and pull through. Chain one and I want you to do one single crochet in here. So technically the corners are one half double crochet, three single crochets and one half but we're starting off in just a corner. Okay, so right into just a partial of it. So the next one will be a half double crochet and then we advance. So what did I tell you? So if it's a double crochet below that means it must be a double crochet above and there's gonna be three of those. So one, two, and three. And then we're into another space. So it's a big space but it's gonna compress itself. So you want to do a half double crochet, a single and a half double crochet and then advance. So if that's a double crochet below it's gonna be a double crochet over into each one of them. There's three of them. So one, two, and three. So the next chain seven space that we're gonna work with. So you can see that it's not this space so it's pretty obvious. So it's gonna be leading into it with a half double crochet, a single and a half double crochet. All within that space. So these are doubles. So that must mean that these must stay double above it. One, two, and three. So this is the only part that is not uh, the same on either side. So the first time that you're gonna do the first chain here is that you're gonna start off with a half and then there will be four single crochets in a row. So just go right around the chain. So one, two, three and four and then do a half double crochet and then into this single crochet I want you to put in a double crochet. That's the very middle. So this large uh, uh, chain 11 gap on the other side is gonna be starting off with a half and then this time it's five single crochets. So this side of the center line is always the same. So there's four singles on this side, five on this side. So we have one, two, three, four, five and th that was five and so then you're gonna finish it off with a half double crochet and then keep on moving. So half and then you just move. So once the half's in this one here there's doubles below so that means that there's doubles above. So one into each. And then you got another space. So the space to start is gonna be a half. And this is a small one so a half, a single and a half. That's it. Then, then you see double crochets again. So you're gonna put in double crochets above. And then you end up with another chain space. So you're not in the corner yet so you have another chain space. So you're gonna do a half a single and a half. And now you're in the corner space. So in the corner spaces what you're always gonna end up with is a half double crochet and then you're gonna do three singles in a row. So one, two, three and then a half. 
and then begin again. So what you can just do then is that you can just go back to the video where I start off with the double crochets again on this side when you had it back over here. So it's really quite an easy pattern to be able to maintain and so just go, go all the way around and then that'll conclude off your square. So I'll meet you at the end of the round to make sure that you finish it off properly because we started with just doing a partial of a corner. So let's uh, meet you back there in just a moment. So I'm just finishing up my last section here before I've just got all the way around and I've got my three double crochets because that was what was below and uh, I'm now on the corner. So when we started we did one single crochet and then a half. So when we start our corner this is the ending corner. It's a half double crochet and then there will be two single crochets in a row. So one and two and then join it to the third one which gives you your three in a row and then that's it. You're gonna fasten this off. Let me just show you how to fasten this off so that you have no yarn tails hanging out. So just pull through. Grab your darning needle. You're gonna need it anyway because you gotta put these together and what you want to do is that glide it through the work three times. So this is a really beautiful yarn just like you see. You could leave a long yarn strand on too just so that you can um, use it to sew to its neighbor if you wanted to. So that's something that you'll have to make up your mind with. So if you go back and forth a total of three times then you're good to go. Now if you were bearing over the existing one that I did like right in the beginning then you should be able to trim that off. If you weren't you'll just use a darning needle. So at this point you're gonna notice it kind of looks like out of shape. So let's just back out the camera here and what you see here. So you want to give it some tugs. Let the stitches just naturally fall where they're supposed to. This here was a starting strand. Remember that we finished that off so I buried that as I went around. You as an intermediate crocheter probably would have done the same thing without me having to tell you that. So you can just stretch everything out and once you start attaching this to the neighbor everything will balance out and then once you attach it just whip stitch it with the neighbor. So use the blue and attach it to your neighbor. So I have other colors here on the side. So I could just attach it to the neighbor. Just use either one of the colors. So I could use green or blue doesn't matter and just whip stitch along the edge. Okay so you can see I gotta block it and so I just gotta whip stitch along the edge and put it all together and then when you're satisfied uh, the final border around is just one single crochet in each of the stitches uh, going all the way around and then in the corners there's three single crochets to be able to do the turn. So it's actually really neat and then I would wet block it, let it dry laying down and then you're good to go and you can remove it, these stitch markers at the same time. So this is how you do the pinwheel. This is a really beautiful pattern. I think it's one of the best I've seen in a long time and, and it's only best because I like the way it looks. I think it's awesome. So it's fun to use the chunky and the colorful yarns but sometimes it's nice to get back to the basics as well. So until next time it's Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Have a good one. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.